Hello, my name is Brandy. Um, if you've never seen a video on my channel before um, and you don't know what this is about, uh, go ahead and pause here and go back to my first, my video before this one. Um, it's my lymphoma diagnosis story, part one. This is gonna be part two. Um, so in part one, just for a brief summary, <clears throat> I talked about the symptoms that I was having, experiencing before I went in for a checkup. Um, when I went through the checkup process, um, eventually, le which led to my biopsy and then eventually my diagnosis. Um, and so I was ending that video at the stage of my diagnosis, uh, what, a few things that I had to do after I learned about my diagnosis. And then um, at that point, I was just waiting until my uh, appointment with my oncologist. So that is where that video left off. Um, since that video, it's been about like a week and a half, maybe two weeks at this point. So yeah, um, this video is gonna be about what has happened since that time, since the making of the part one video, what I've learned, what I've experienced, um, and where I am now. So let's start back um, on the 5th of January of the new year, 2023. Um, actually, let's start with the brand new year, uh, January 1st. So going into the new year, I decided that I was gonna stop caffeine. Um, so no coffee for me, I'm an avid coffee drinker. I have one to two cups of coffee a day. Um, but I decided no more coffee for me, just tea, water, and juices. Um, and also I'm gonna cut back on sugar. Um, and so in doing that, I gave a lot of stuff away at the end of the beginning of the new year. We still have coffee in the house because my fiance drinks coffee for work, or before work and you know, whenever. Um, uh, but I gave a lot of sweets away, like candy and cookies and stuff like that. I just gave it away. Um, I did try to eat some stuff like, you know, during the holidays to still enjoy the holidays. But after that, um, I just like, gave it away once I got sick of it um, and no alcohol. So, um, you know, going into the beginning of the year, I was experiencing some, experiencing some um, withdrawals from the no caffeine. Um, I did, you know, experience some um, like stomach issues for like a day or two and then I had a headache, had a migraine and then after that I've been totally fine. That happened within the first week of the of the year. Um so that's that's all that really happened for me. I wasn't like I mean I guess I did have some some form of caffeine addiction but it wasn't as bad as some people who have been drinking coffee every day for like 10 years or something like that, which is not my experience. So um, I was grateful for that. Um, so I'm just going to be quitting that, the coffee thing, until the end of my chemo treatment. Um, when I get into remission, then I'll have a cup of coffee again. Uh, I did already accidentally have a slip up. I just had a little tiny sip of coffee because I forgot uh, for a second when we went to breakfast. Once we eat breakfast at a restaurant, I forgot um, that I'm not drinking coffee right now. And I just ordered coffee like that, like nothing, you know, because I used to always drink coffee. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, we get to the fifth day of the year. That's when I meet my oncologist, or that's when I met her. Um, she's really great. I was able to ask her so many questions. I literally took a notebook with like two pages worth of questions. I had like 15 or 16 questions. She answered all of them. I wrote all of my answers down. Um, she explained to me what uh, the results of my scans were, um, which resulted in her being able to determine the stage of the cancer that I have. And then she talked about the plan that um, she has for me for treatment. So um, I learned that I have stage two uh, diffuse large B-cell cancer or lymphoma. Um, so uh, <clears throat> because of that, um, they, you know, kind of with the treatment plan, um, they also did a test of like how quickly my type of cancer grows. Um, so she was explaining that there for the type of lymphoma that I have, there's a rating scale of um, high grade, intermediate grade, or low grade, and that um, correlates to the the um, that correlates to like how quickly the cancer grows. And there's also a test that they can do to also test that. And on that test, I um, my cancer got an eighty percent score, so it grows quickly. The higher the score, the faster the cancer grows. So that put me at an inter intermediate level of um, or intermediate grade of large B cell lymphoma. So, um, you know, it grows pretty quickly. It's, it's already an aggressive type of um, type of cancer. Like it grows very quickly anyways, like that's just the nature of it. So um, 
you know, my ecologist wanted to start me on chemotherapy right away as quickly as possible. Um, and she also noted that, you know, in the in between the time that I went to the uh, my appointment with my OB and had the ultrasound and between the time that they did the PET scan, which is approximately like a month and a couple weeks or a month and a half, um, my cancer mass grew um, one centimeter in size. So that was something that was, you know, interesting to me and not really, I mean, it was a little concerning for sure. Uh, I, now that it's been a, a like, you know, half a week since she's told me that information, I don't feel as concerned about it right now. Uh, but, you know, at the moment it was a little concerning, um, you know, but she, but then she went into the treatment plan and, and you know, how she felt the treatment would go and that she felt it would be um, a curable type of cancer for me. So, you know, so the plan that she, she has for me is for, for me to do chemotherapy for um, six rounds or six sessions of chemotherapy, um, but spread out so that I have a treatment every three weeks, once every three weeks. So that comes out to about six months, give or take, right? So, um, you know, I was planning to start the chemotherapy on the following Monday. So I met with my oncologist on Thursday. And then the following Monday, Monday um, she had scheduled for me to have my first chemotherapy session. But in our consultation, she did mention that um, the type of chemotherapy that I will be receiving does, you know, obviously causes the hair loss that a lot of patients who go through chemotherapy have, um, but it can also cause infertility because of, um, you know, the the drugs are, they're targeted to kill fast growing cells and it doesn't just target the cancer cells, it targets all cells in your body. So um, that will, it would affect my eggs and my ovaries. Um, and because I didn't have any children, I, I'm never been married, I'm engaged currently, and I don't have any children uh, prior to my marriage, um, you know, she did want to let me know my options for fertility. So I had a few more questions to ask her, and since she isn't, she's an oncologist and she's not, um, you know, well-versed in fertility options and, you know, the research behind it and whatnot, she referred me to a fertility specialist. Um, so I did meet with the fertility specialist actually the following day after I met with my oncologist um, and she went through the options with me. Um, so if you're in California or you have a family member who lives in California and they're going through um, cancer diagnosis and looking forward to the treatment, um, prior to the treatment, you definitely want to um, ask your doctor or have your family member ask their doctor about, um, what's it called? potential uh, fertility preservation. So in California, the um, the Senate passed, or the state passed a Senate bill, um, which is Senate Bill 600, but it basically what it does is it mandates, <clears throat> excuse me, it mandates health insurance in California to cover the um, operation of freezing eggs for cancer patients. So it makes it completely free for any cancer patient in California. It's covered by insurance. Um, but it's a whole process. So if you're looking into doing that, um, just know what the process, just know that, you know, it's an option for you. Um, it is free. Now, your doctor will most likely tell you, you can also choose to freeze embryos. Um, that is an additional cost because that's not covered by insurance. Um, but that's another option depending on your age and your cycle and whatnot. They'll, you know, tell you what they think, what they recommend. Um, might be a good option for you if you want to try to have a family in the future um, because, you know, we only get so many eggs. We get however many eggs we get when we're born and then, you know, over time they die if we don't use them. So that's what, that is what it is. Um, if you decide to freeze your eggs at the time that you freeze them is at like whatever age you are at the time that they're retrieved is the age of the eggs. So... If you freeze them whenever you're 25, your eggs are 25 years old, and that's how old your eggs will be, essentially, whenever they are thawed out because they're not, like, growing or processing anymore. Like, they're frozen in time. Like, their cell, um, not generation, fossil generation, their, their cell um, activity is frozen in time. So that's how old the cells will be, or the eggs will be, the cells in the eggs will be when they're thawed out. 
that was a necessary explanation. Anyways, so um, <clears throat> that was an option. Um, I talked to, to that doctor. We did an ultrasound that day to see, like, you know, to look at the eggs that I have producing at that time. I, decide, uh, I decided to go ahead and move forward with the egg preservation. Um, and, you know, my doctor talked to me about all of the medications I would have to take. Um, there are certain medications that you have to take to stimulate the growth to grow faster. Um, so they may tell you that it'll take like two weeks. For me, in my case, it, it'll take two weeks for the eggs to get to the right size for them to retrieve them. Uh, for some people, it may take longer or it may take shorter, just depending on where you are in your current menstrual cycle, like not menstrual cycle, but like your cycle of, you know, menstruation, whatnot. Your doctor will explain it way better than I can. And it's put, plus it's, it'll be individualized to each person anyways. So for me, it's going to take two weeks. So that pushed my chemo treatment back two weeks. So now I'm going to start chemo treatment on the 23rd instead of the 9th of January. Um, but I am feeling really content about my decision. Of course, it's a, a personal decision for every person, um, whether or not they want to do it, whether or not they want to tell people about it, um, or whether or not they want to keep it for themselves, their own personal you know, thing, because, you know, it's already a sensitive time anyways, when you're going through so much. And then there's already a lot of societal pressure to have children to have a family or to not have children or like whatever decision you make people have an opinion on it. So like for some people, it's just easier to do their thing and not tell anybody about it. Um, but for me, I really enjoy um, like sharing p stuff that's related to public health. So that's why I'm sharing this information. Obviously use your uh, common sense and your discretion when asking me questions about the IVF process. Like I'm not gonna answer any personal questions about when I wanna have kids or how many kids I'm gonna have. Like just know that that's like a boundary for me. I won't be answering personal questions if I like that. But if you have any questions about the IVF process itself, then feel free. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, what else about it? So there are several like drugs that you'll have to take. Mine are injectable. I don't know if there's any other way to do it, but I'm just telling you my experience. Uh, mine are inject uh, injectables. One of them I have to mix myself so the um the doctors or the nurses will call you and tell you you know what doses to take um and then like the dosages are pre-filled by vial so each vial has like a certain dosage and then they tell you to take x amount of vials um and then you, it's just like mixed with water that also comes in a vial so you have to like mix it they'll show you how to do it um you can inject yourself or you can have someone you have someone else do it for you um, and then there's another one um, that I take at night again, like at the same time as the one that I have to mix. And um, it's already pre-mixed. It's like in a pen. That one's super easy. It's already in a pen. You just have to like turn a dial to the right number. Whatever number your doctor tells you um, is the doses that you need to take. You do that. And then that's the second injectable. Um, at a certain point, you may need to take um, a third medicine in the morning, every morning um, at like a specific time. Um, but that just depends on, you know, where you are in your cycle, how your eggs are growing and whatnot. So, um, again, I'll take all of this with like, just, this is just the outline. Your specific information is dependent on you and your specific, um, plan that your doctor has for you. So, um, if you want to see, you know, the process of, uh, you know, how the, and, how the medicines are prepared and everything like that. I'm going to put a short clip in right here. Um, don't worry, I will not be showing the part where I am injecting the medicine. I'm gonna block that off just because, you know, some people have a phobia of needles and also it's kind of like too weird for the internet to put that out there. So that's gonna be blocked off. But, you know, if you wanna see the whole process, I'll put a clip in there.
Yeah, that's where I am now. I met my oncologist, I met the fertility doctor, I'm doing the egg retrieval, um, and then I start my chemotherapy. So um, my personal uh, like hospital or healthcare plan that I have, they set up a um, like a class, they call it the chemotherapy class. They tell you about what chemotherapy is, what the side effects are, what you should try to avoid, things like that. Um, and they like it's well right now it's like a zoom call basically or it's like a team's call actually is what it is so they do a team's call um i don't know if in the past they did it in person or not but i'm pretty sure it's only for people who are getting ready to start chemo it's not like people who have already started and are immunocompromised because otherwise that wouldn't make sense um, because they wouldn't want a bunch of people who have a low immune system in the same room like that would not be safe and i don't think that they would do that so so yeah, um, it probably was in person before, but right now it's it's online. Um, so that was something interesting. I have some, um, they also send you resources, or at least they did for, in my experience, they sent me resources as well. Um, and they have like a little PowerPoint presentation. Um, and Ariane went over the PowerPoint presentation presentation and then she um, had had everyone ask questions at the end so you're able to ask questions and get feedback and also like in some cases she was able to say you know what I'm gonna go ahead and look at your chart after you know after the presentation and then I'll call you like within 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever you know I'll call you at a specific time to talk about the medications that you have been assigned to take or whatever uh, because also I learned that chemotherapy there's also some pills that like some there's like chemo pills that some people take which I don't think I got um but I have a lot of pills right now so it's kind of like I'm not to that point yet so I'm not really worried about it right now so yeah um I also got assigned a nurse I don't know if I said this in the last video but that same day that I was diagnosed I was assigned a nurse who um I will meet on my first day of chemo and um, she will help me go through like all of my medications and instructions and whatnot. I've already been emailing her a lot of things um, like questions like I emailed her, will I still be able to clean my house? Here are the, the chemicals that I use to typically clean my house like Ajax or Comet. Um, I use Dawn dish soap, I use uh, Fabuloso to clean the floor, like am I still able to use that? And she was like, yeah, you can still clean your house. All that those chemicals are totally fine. Sorry, my nose is so itchy. Um, so those chemicals are totally fine. Um, and you'll obviously want to clean your house because you don't want anything like growing and any bacteria that might get you sick in your house. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I also asked her like, will I still be able to take care of my dog? Because you know, I have my dog. He's just a little dog, a little Maltese. Um, and she's like, yeah, you can still take care of your dog. You can still like cuddle with him, pet him, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the only thing is you can't like pick up his poop or clean up his pee, anything like that. If he like goes to the bathroom in the house or like outside or whatever, um, that you'll have to have someone else do for you. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> my fiance is really gonna, you know, love having to clean up all the poop all the time. She said, even with like, if you pick it up with a bag, which obviously I, I do pick it up with a bag, um, I wouldn't be picking it up with my bare hands. Um, but she's like, even if you pick it up with a bag, like you shouldn't be handling any sort of like, you know, feces or anything from like a dog or anything. So I'm like any sort of like pet or animal. So I'm like, okay, that's good to know. Like if I was thinking about it myself, like logically, I probably would have been thinking that like, if I use the bag to pick it up and just like wash my hands afterwards, that it would just be okay. And I wouldn't be like in a bad place but um so yeah anyways I'm glad that I asked just to be sure um because that's something that just randomly popped up into my head like in the middle of the night I was like huh I wonder if I can still like take the dog out whatever whatever like can I still like have the dog because you know dogs go outside they walk around they like pee everywhere you know they walk in their own pee, they smell other dogs pee and other dogs poop, you know? So I was like, huh, I wonder if like having my dog here in the house would like cause a problem with me being immunocompromised. Um, we don't typically let them sleep on the bed. We haven't let them sleep on the bed in years, like over like probably like six or seven years, we haven't let them sleep on the bed. So that's not really a, an issue. It's just more of like him 
you know, kicking up dust and like, you know, bringing, checking stuff in and out of the house. That was more my concern and what I was thinking of. So yeah, I was glad I asked. Um, so yeah, what's next? So I have my um, egg retrieval on the 18th. And then, like I said, I'm starting my um, chemotherapy on the 23rd. I'm supposed to get my pick line on the um, 22nd, which is a Sunday. So a pick line is um, when they, so the nurse will put in a IV into your arm, into your vein. Um, they choose like the upper arm, I think it is. Um, and they put it in and they have to like follow the vein up till it gets closer to the heart. Um, so that way when they put the chemotherapy in, um, they put it in through the, the pick line. It's like a central, there's another word for it, it's like a central line. Um, it falls under the category of a central line because there's another type of central line called a port. Uh, but a pick line is like it goes in through your arm and they follow the vein up to the heart. Um, and that way when they put the medicine in, it goes in like this and it gets pumped through the heart and then throughout the body, right? Um, so it gets, you know, pumped up faster. Um, you can get uh, chemotherapy through the vein like here, um, but you run the risk of like, your veins getting tired worn down um, because of like the drugs that are going through it so a uh, pick line is preferable it's more short term um, you do have to keep it maintained so you have to flush it every day you have to get the uh, dressings changed once a week by a nurse um, and it like hangs out it doesn't it doesn't hang out but like it's more it's more external than it is internal. So like you have to cover it when you shower. Um, you have to keep it taped up, you know, like they're going to tape it up and you have to like, you know, keep it like that, keep it covered and whatnot. Um, whereas with a port, it is, you have to do a surgical, surgical procedure. Um, it is more internal. It's usually placed on the chest because it's closer to the heart. So the, the, um, the silicone like, like part of the, so, okay, so they put the needle in in order to get the the, um, the silicone thing in, but then that's what goes into your vein. It's not like metal or anything that's in there. Um, so it, it still goes to the same place, the vein in your heart, the vein to your heart, uh, but it's a shorter distance. It's a shorter distance, and um, it's like surgically in there. So like surgically placed in there and then on the outside, there's like this plastic part on the outside, but it's completely like waterproof. So you can shower, you can go swimming, the whole nines if you really want to. But um, so yeah, that's the advantages of the port. It's more long-term. So, um, but you know, in order to get the surgery to do the port, you might have to wait like a month or so just depending on what's available at your hospital or your healthcare facility. So um, a lot more people get the pick line, uh, but with the pick line, there's the run, you run the risk of getting an infection or getting blood clot or something like that, just because, you know, you have to flush it every day and there's ma there's more maintenance to it that you have to do. And, you know, the more careful you are, the better, but obviously, you know, things do happen. Like you could get a blood clot, and that's just like something that could happen and you just, you know, you just need to monitor it. So, you know, that's a little bit more work. Uh, so you want more work in the front end and you want more work in the back end. It just depends, you know. Also, it depends on how many rounds of chemo you have to do. Like if you have to do a lot, then maybe the port is a better decision for you. So personal choice. Um, What else? That's pretty much it. That's all I know right now. I've told a lot of family, I told a lot of friends, um, pretty much all my friends I've told, um, and now it's just like, I need to go through it. Um, so right now I'm just going through the process of the egg retrieval, taking the medicines until I get the, till I do the egg retrieval, um, and then I'm going to do the chemo. So yeah, um, if you want more information on the IVF process, like the medications, um, how many doctor's visits you, you have to go to and whatnot, um, what does that look like? 
uh, definitely let me know in the comments um, if you yourself have diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or um, T-cell lymphoma um, even, let me know in the comments because I don't see a lot of people online that have this type of cancer that make videos or like even on like Instagram with like there's so many different pages of like you know, there's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, but there's different types of leukemia, there's different types of lymphoma. So I don't get to, see, I don't see a lot of people with the exact type of um, lymphoma that I have. So yeah, if you or someone you know has this type of, has the B-cell lymphoma or the T-cell lymphoma, um, I'm, I started making videos so we can kind of connect with one another and get information from one another. So I, if you have any experience let me know um, and yeah that's pretty much it um, I'll have links down in the description box but it's not really much of anything I don't think um, other than like if you want to support the channel if you want to get any of the products that I have been trying oh I didn't tell you guys so I, I um, decided to go ahead and go and buy some ginger um, some ginger like candies, so they're like chewable candies, um, in order to like deal with the nausea. So with the medicine that I'm taking right now, so every once in a while I'll, I'll have like a little bit of nausea. So I'll just eat one after I do the, um, do the shots in the evening. And, and like, I don't know if it's a mind thing or if it actually works, but a lot of people say that it works. So that's why I bought it and it, it, it's pretty good. So I, I think it tastes good. There's different flavors. Like you can get like the ginger or some whatever flavor, but I just got the original ginger flavor. That's what I got. And I like the flavor of ginger, so I think it's good. Um, if you're interested in that, then I'll, like I said, I'll put the links down below. And then I also got um, these mouth guards off of Amazon. Um, I got them because I noticed myself whenever I um, take the shots, sometimes I like clench my teeth whenever... Um, like the poke, I can like feel it go in or like afterwards I can feel the stinging. Um, it doesn't last very long. It lasts like maybe 60 seconds or less, but like I can, I noticed myself clenching my back teeth. So I got myself some mouth guards off of Amazon also. So if that happens for you or you're like, you're afraid of needles or don't like shots or, you know, there's a lot, if you're going through this right now, then you know, there's a lot of blood work that has to happen like pretty much every other day right now. So if, if that like bothers you and you notice yourself clenching your teeth, um, get some mouth guards to, so you don't clench or grind your teeth. Cause that like, you know, it doesn't, it's not good for your mouth. That's not good for your jaw. That's not good for your teeth. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that below. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the end. Um, I'm going to definitely try to do updates throughout. Um, if you want to see like a vlog style thing, let me know. Um, or if you're more into like these once in a while updates, that's cool too. I can do that. So let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off um, for now because I'm going to have to get ready to eat dinner and then take my evening shots. So talk to you later. Bye.